Alrighty, how's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be starting off Kingdom Hearts 3 Channel Memories. I'm going to be playing on Proud Mode to start off. Well, throughout the entire game, I guess. But I'm just going to be quiet right away because there's a bunch of cutscenes that are going to be coming up. So then, once those are all over, I'll get back to you. Along the road ahead lies something you need. However, in order to claim it, you must lose something that is dear to you.
Hey, you think it's okay to barge in? But we gotta do it if we're gonna find the king. The king? King Mickey's here? Something just told me he'd be here, okay? Really? Cause now that you mention it, I was kinda thinking the same thing. Seriously? Me too. One look at this castle, and I just knew. Our very best friends, they're here. <laughs> yup, guess great minds think alike. Wait, hey, hold on. It can't be just a coincidence. Oh no, Kimmy. You don't mean that. Yep, I had it too. Mm hmm I had the exact same feeling. Gorge, maybe it's contagious. No, no, something screwy. We gotta go take a look. All right. Where, where are you going? That way, to the door. <laughs> are you scared? Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous. Come on, let's go, Goofy. Hey, fellers, uh, shouldn't we shut the door behind us before we go? Sora! That's it. Who are you? Well, hi, yes. Oh, yeah? I'll try some magic. Sega! Come on. Sega! Sega! Come on. Sega! Fire! I should think it's obvious. The moment you set foot in this castle, you forgot every spell and every ability you ever knew. In this place, to find is to lose, and to lose is to find. That is the way in Castle Oblivion. Castle Oblivion? Here you will meet people that you have known in the past. And you will meet people you miss. I miss? Riku! You mean Riku's here? If what you want... is to find him... What'd you do? I merely sampled your memories, and from them, I made this. To reunite with those you hold dear. What's this? A card? It is a promise for the reunion you seek. Hold the card to open the door, and beyond it a new world. Proceed, Sora. To lose and claim anew. Or to claim anew only to lose. Huh. Come on. Let's go.
So now that the introduction's all over, time to finally start off the game. So this first level is basically just a giant tutorial. There's nothing really too difficult about it. And the whole game isn't really that difficult if you know what you're doing. Even on Proud. Because from what I've noticed, because I just did a little test run earlier. Actually, I've never beaten this on Proud before, so this will be a first, but... What I've noticed, enemies don't seem to deal too much more damage than they do normally, so I don't know what exactly is the difference between Proud Mode and Standard and Beginner. Maybe higher cards for the enemies, I'm not too sure. But, as you may have noticed already, hopefully noticed, this is a card-based Kingdom Hearts game, so all your attacks are done by cards. That goes for abilities, magic, items, before you progress any further to a different room, it's generally a good idea to hit all the things that have those little, uh, I guess, target assist lock-ons, just so you can get some movable points. Or if you're low on health, you can get that as well. 
And, um, there's usually a card or two on a room. Like, some rooms I've gotten two fires before, you can get blizzards, you can basically get any card from a room. And this is basically just explaining how keys work, or car keys. And then save point works like any other Kingdom Hearts game, stand at it, press triangle. Yeah. And with this game, for the HD Remix version, version, you can also get to the title screen from them, which is a nice little feature. sure what the precise button input is to do that, to use two cards instead of three for um, stocking. I think it's both L1 and R1, that's what I normally press, but you can do that if you don't want to use all three cards, but your uh, first card still won't respawn when you reload your deck, so generally, uh, kinda wanna avoid slights, but at the same time you wanna rely on them. Just like be observant of what cards you use. Because there's gonna be ways in the game later that you're gonna be able to replenish your cards, even if you use them in slights. But for the most part, Early game, you don't really need to use slides, you can just keep on just smashing X. Or if you're down to the last enemy, you don't want to worry about a card break, go ahead and just use a slide. Or excuse me, stacking cards. And with leveling up, what I normally like to do is boost my CP, because that controls how many cards you can put in a deck. For HP, you don't need too much in this game. Although, you can see there, the enemy barely did any damage. That's pretty much yeah. what the enemies do for damage on Proud Mode throughout most of the game. It's not too much more than that, like, I don't think there's enemy normal, excuse me, any normal Heartless that'll do that to you. Like a one-hit KO. Some of the bosses do have some abilities that can one-hit KO you, but... If you really want to, you can boost your HP. But, generally, the more CP you have, the better. First world is kind of a pain with cards because a lot of the enemies play the cards that you have, like the values. And that's not always fun to deal with, so just be careful on those. So I guess I would take back what I said earlier about slates being a bad thing. Stocking here is probably a good idea. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Just play how you want to play. Or like... I'm just explaining how I've played the past few years. Because when I first started this game, I was really horrendous at it. And things didn't always go so well for me, so... I'm definitely glad that I understand how the game works now. So, another thing that I want to mention is that, as the uh, footed figure stated before, you can access your uh, enemy cards by pressing it down on the touchpad. Not sure what it is if you're on Xbox, but you should tell you there as well. And enemy cards are very beneficial for this game because they each have a different ability. So, those orange guys that are just killed have little fire boost effects, and that lasts once per reload. And I'll explain a bit more about enemy cards after I uh, get through this room, but I'm just gonna let the whole uh, cutscene, I guess you could call it, play out. So, enjoy.
So that was just a nice little tutorial on how slides work, just in case it needs some practice. But um, for the most part, there's nothing really too difficult about Driver's Town. I mean, guard armor is a little tough, but as long as you know how the cards work, you should be fine. And I'll explain a little bit more on how bosses work in this game once I get up to there. And whenever you see an enemy, you generally want to fight it just to get the EXP. Because leveling up is pretty crucial. I mean, I'm actually not sure if you can complete this game in like a one card run. I'd be very interested to see that. Like, I imagine it could be possible. But I've never really looked that up. If anyone knows, be sure to let me know, because I'm really curious if you can beat this game with one card. As I was saying with enemy cards, there's a whole bunch of different boosts. For example, the Heartless, they increase your cards. I believe it's only attack cards by one, it could be all cards. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. But, like, this would be a little bit less of a struggle if I had the uh, Heartless card. But for zeros, they also increase those as well, so that's not a good idea to use them. It's probably only beneficial really for early game worlds if you really need to use them, because zero by itself is still probably the best card to use. They have a tendency to get broken right away, which isn't very fun. And some of the Heartless have second chance, I want to say. They might have once more as well, but. They for sure at least have second chance, so I think that's kind of helpful for bosses, but really the whole struggle to getting the enemy cards is actually obtaining them in the first place, because they don't always want to appear, and that's kind of unfortunate because they have really cool effects. I mean, you could probably go out the entire game without getting a single normal Heartless card, which kind of sucks, but I think it's just RNG based. Sometimes the game likes you, sometimes it doesn't. Although on my standard playthrough, I did feel like I was getting a lot more enemy cards than on beginner. So I'm not sure if it's also difficulty based, like if there's a multiplier used. I'm not sure.
so with every world, most worlds in this game, there's always the three gold cards for sure. There's the key to beginnings, key to guidance, key to truth. Key to truth always contains a boss fight, so just be prepared for it. And then sometimes, if you're lucky, which mostly happens later on in the game, there's also a key to rewards, which will give you a really nice bonus. In this case, since I've already completed the game once, and completed 358 over 2 days, you can get organization cards, for organization 13, which is the enemy group of this game, and Kingdom Hearts 2. And they also have, like, really cool effects. Like, one of the cards boosts your card strength for key cards, like key blade cards. And there might be one for, um, auto light. Yeah, I believe it's auto life. But they have really nice effects compared to the regular Heartless cards, so if you manage to snag one, just always keep track of what rooms you've unlocked with the um, key to rewards card, because you don't want to use the same key on the same floor. Yes, yeah, so that'd be a waste. And the enemies also switch throughout the world, so you're not always going to be seeing um, soldiers on the s different floors. You're also going to be seeing large bodies, the um, Neo Shadows, Blue Rhapsodies, all sorts of enemies. Not really going to use Donald there because it's zero and zeros are easily broken. I mean, you could break an enemy's card first, but I always have horrible luck with using zeros. And the reason that I'm heading towards the door right away is you don't really need to level up more than five times throughout this first world. You can if you want to, but leveling in this world's not super important. I mean, you could beat it at level one, I'm sure, but not really necessary. If you want to, there might be like one more level up available, but you don't have to. I mean, when I first played through this game, I just skipped all the enemies and, well, I didn't skip all. I knew I had to fight some of them, but I know for guard armor, I was only level one or two. That was not very fun. boss guard armor and the thing about bosses is, is that some of them can do slights as well but for the most part if you want to play it safe just keep breaking their cards and attacking and you'll easily win but if you want to you can just smash your cards but I don't recommend that but for guard armor you're pretty safe to do whatever you want but try and play a little safe breaking. That bear is a gimmick card. What the card does is neutralize the boss momentarily. They're only available for Disney bosses and uh, guard armor. And how you get them is 
generally by either attacking the enemy or breaking their cards. So if you want to make it really easy, you can just wait until the enemy plays the card and keep breaking it. And I think, in my luck, it's usually, it seems like a 1 out of 3 chance to get the gimmick card. Like, see there, I've already got another one. So if you really want to play it super safe, just keep on breaking their cards. And you'll just keep getting gimmick cards. Slates are also a pretty good use, depending on which boss you're fighting. And... There's not really too much to say about this guy, just keep on breaking his cards, you'll keep getting gimmick cards. And just keep an eye out for how many key cards you have left to attack with, or magic, however you want to go about fighting him. And it'll be fine. It's probably a good idea to use Simba here as well, but... I don't really feel like using him because it takes quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to hold off on using him. Or if there's a few enemies, then go ahead and use him. But other than that, you really shouldn't have too much trouble with this boss. Alright, so, I think that just about wraps it up for this video. I always like to hit everything in the last rooms, just to see what I'll get, so I'll probably just end up showing off all the last rooms, just in case people are curious. But, 
yeah that's gonna do it for this video the next video will start off with a cutscene so we'll see you guys then